One of the things we were quite surprised about with the Airstream rangeline is that it turns out that the galley circuit, which is what you use to plug the cooktop into, is not powered by the inverter. So it cannot be used while running off of battery alone. Uh, we were actually caught by surprise by this. We went out camping and uh, found out that it was just not working. And we thought, this must be a mistake because there's no way <laughs> that the most important thing that you want to power off the battery is not powered off the battery. But after talking to our dealer and checking with Airstream uh, support, that is indeed the case. Um, if you look at the circuit diagrams, which Airstream very helpfully included in the owner's manual, you can clearly see that the induction cooktop here, which is powered through the galley receptacle, is powered through a GFIC circuit, but that circuit is not powered by the inverter. The inverter circuit is this one down here, uh, where you can see the inverter load goes through the microwave, and the microwave is powered by the inverter, but the galley cooktop is not. Um, this makes no sense to me. This is just a, a huge drawback to the vehicle. And so uh, I need to do something about that to fix that. Now looking at this, there's a couple of different things that I thought I could do. Uh, one is try and uh, rewire the circuit breaker panel and directly wire the uh, galley cooktop through the inverter circuit. Now the danger there is of course the inverter is only a 2 kilowatt inverter uh, and the potential loads, the microwave is a 1 kilowatt load and the cooktop is also a 1 kilowatt load uh, and then plus any incidental loads you might potentially overload that circuit. So that's probably not the best idea. In addition, that would be a lot of work <laughs> to go through and rewire everything uh, through this circuit here. But what I noticed is that both the uh, galley and the microwave outlets are powered through a relay, and it turns out it's the same relay. Uh, according to the circuit diagram, both of these relays are located right behind the microwave. Uh, so it should be fairly easy, actually, to install a switch so that I can switch which circuit, either the galley outlet or the microwave outlet, is powered off the inverter circuit. Uh, that way, there's no danger of overload. I'm definitely going to keep it below one kilowatt. Uh, but I can selectively choose whether I want to power the microwave or the induction cooktop. So that's my plan. Uh, we'll go take the microwave out and see what we've got behind there. This is my plan for rewiring the galley. So this is a quick quick and dirty circuit diagram of what's going on right now. We have the uh, relay. We have an inverted circuit going in and a GFIC circuit going in to the microwave and the galley receptacles, respectively. So what I'm going to do is introduce a uh, double pull, double throw switch in between those two. So if the switch was completely open, neither would be powered like this. So in the normal switch position, what we're going to see is uh, we're going to continue to power the microwave and the galley as they were powered before. So you'll see that the uh, inverter circuit goes to the microwave and the galley circuit goes to the galley. But when I flip the switch to the other position, what you can see is I, I'm going to basically swap the two. So the galley will now be powered on the inverted circuit and the microwave will be powered on the GFIC circuit. Uh, the reason I wanted to do it this way is because now, whether it's on AC or DC power, uh, it'll still work reasonably. Uh, it'll be kind of odd that we're swapping which one is the GFIC circuit, but I don't think that's terrible. Um, you know, Generally, I'd want to make sure the switch was in the right position, uh, but even if I forgot for some reason to switch the switch back to the other position, things will still work reasonably. Today we're going to be playing with AC power. So the first thing you need to do is make sure the van is not plugged in, battery disconnect is turned off, and the inverter is disabled. Uh, and ideally check with a voltmeter too to make sure all the outlets are dead. Uh, one thing to be aware of is for the inverter, I found that even with the battery disconnect off, sometimes the inverter can still be powering the circuit. So you want to make sure it's completely dead. Alright, uh, first step is to remove the microwave. It's actually really easy. There's just four screws right here. You unplug the microwave up in the cabinet here and you can lift the entire unit right out. So, simple. Screws are out, uh, so unplug the microwave. 
so the cable can feed down through the hole here. And it should come right out. This is what it looks like in the back of the microwave. And what we came here to see. This is a temperature sensor wire. This is another temperature sensor wire, just kind of taped over here. This is the relay for both the galley circuit and the microwave circuit. Uh, you can see the power comes in here. One of these circuits is on the inverter, one is not. <laughs> and it comes out over here. Again, one is the inverter, one is, the, one is not. And those are the ones we're going to want to switch. The wire here looks like it's 12 gauge, so we'll want to get some 12 ga gauge wire to match. Let me show you the parts that I decided to put together for this. Here's the parts list for this project. I got first a double pull, double throw switch, um, which also has an off center position. Make sure the switch is rated for the appropriate current. Uh, this one has plenty of amps available. Uh, rather than using the nut tie-ins, I wanted to use the lever tie-ins to tie the various wires together. I'll need a junction box, of course, to make everything nice, clean, and safe. And these are adapters that go to the quick disconnect on the switch to the wire. Next up, we're going to go ahead and pull the face box off this relay. Again, exercise extreme caution here. Make sure to test everything uh, and make sure the AC power is off. My plan is that I'm going to install my new junction box just to the left over here. I'm going to install my switch against the wall there. And it should come through the wall right over here above the galley. And that's where I'm going to mount the switch right there. So you'll be able to toggle it right there like that. This is what the relay box looks like once you take the cover off. So clearly um, here's the two relays here. Um, they've got these nice little lever tabs pulling everything together so it'll be easy to take them apart. Uh, so I just need to verify which wire is which and we should be good to go. After some quick testing with the voltmeter, uh, here's what I found. So this is actually the inverted circuit, both in and out across the top. And this is the galley circuit, in and out across the bottom. So rather than having ins and outs like this, they've just wired it as to uh, above and below. So that means what I'm going to need to do is to run the outputs from here over to the junction box. And based on the length of the cable and the lack of any slack here, uh, I'm going to probably mount my junction box over here rather than over here. There's plenty of room on either side. We should be able to screw the junction box in securely uh, to this body frame, just like they've had this junction box. Everything should be nice and tight. What I'm going to do to keep everything organized is I'm going to use some electrician's tape. I'm going to mark in blue the inverted circuit and leave the other one unmarked. And then I can just put a little tech mark, check mark with a pin to indicate which wires are in and which wires are out. You can see on the relays there, they helpfully mark them uh, normally open, normally closed, so you can see the common, the input. And that lets me tell which wire is the input and which wire is the output. So you're only going to need to disconnect the output here and leave the input connected. There's the two wires that I want pulled out. Um, always remember to check your insulation and make sure that it's not chewed up by the little metal fittings that it has to go through. These look fine. So now to get the uh, extension wires in place. To mark where I want to mount the switch, what I did is I took the switch here. This is the switch that I'm going to mount. And I'd like to mount it right up in here, out of the way. So what I did is I made a little paper template of the switch that I can just put here, mark the outline, and then go ahead and drill through the backboard here. I have put some masking tape on just to make sure I don't scratch up the cabinets since I'm going to be working really closely in the tight corner there. I have measured and marked off where the back panel here comes to on the inside and that's that line so I need to drill and cut the hole to the side of that. So I'll go ahead and mark where I'm going to place it now. I started by drilling four little pilot holes and now I'll just use a thin saw to cut between them 
and hopefully make a nice square hole. After a fair bit of drilling and sanding very carefully to try and make sure I didn't cut too far, I think I've got the hole exactly the right size for the switch to fit in very snugly. After looking how, at how crowded this uh, relay box was, I realized my original plan of having a small junction box not going to fly. So I went back and got a uh, quite a bit larger box here. I think this will still fit. This is a 4x4x2 four by four by box. I just got a waterproof plastic box, drilled some holes in the side for some nice cable clamps, and I actually reused the aluminum mounting bracket from the cell phone signal booster, which I hadn't used before. What I'm thinking is this will mount in here, just like that, since there's not a lot of room on these cables. I couldn't put it over on the other side, so I'll put it on this side. I'll run the wires across from the relay box, then over to the switch, then back from the switch, and out the receptacle wires. And here we have the switch, all wired up and ready to snap into its hole. And over here, we've got all of the wiring all set up and uh, ready to wire together. Okay, got the final wiring caps all on, tested continuity. Now it's time to fire up the inverter and see if it behaves as expected. All right, we've switched the inverter on. I've currently got the switch, the DPDT in the middle position, meaning there's no power. I've got the microwave plugged in and it is not on. I'm gonna move the switch to the normal position at the top. Everything's looking good here. And the microwave is now powered by the inverter. I'm going to move the switch to the bottom position. And now the galley outlet should be powered. I have run into a bit of a snag. Uh, testing the system in all possible modes, I found that while the inverter is engaged, the galley common is actually not grounded to anything. So even though I'm switching the hot, it still doesn't operate the galley. I tried to work around that by bridging the common, and that works in inverter mode, but when I'm on AC power, uh, it basically trips the GFIC all the time because it's sharing the, uh, the common. The GFIC, just, the GFIC just trips immediately. In order to make this work, either I would have to run another switch that swapped the commons as well as the hots, which meant, means running all these cables again to another parallel switch. Um, rather than doing that, I'm just going to run a single switch that will bridge the commons, and I will engage that when I'm in the inverter mode for the galley, and when I'm not in the inverter mode for the galley, I'll just switch it off. And hopefully that should work. That means one more wire and one more switch. There it is all buttoned up again with the ground wire switch. Here's the final solution I came up with. The top switch switches the hots and the bottom switch switches the grounds. So not perfect, but it gets the job done. And styling wise, I think it fits in nicely with the rest of the ring line decor. We're ready for the final test. So the inverter is on now and the switch is in the normal position and we can see the microwave is powered. All right, let's go ahead and uh, switch it off and the microwave is unpowered. Toggle the grounds, switch it to alternate and the galley stove comes on. As expected. Now shore AC power is on and both the microwave is on and you can see the galley outlet is live too.